Hello and welcome to another video, this time a review from Cruisy Road 4472 aka me Tommy and sorry about my hand but today we have it's an Alienar A4 Mallard, oh yes the beast herself yep struggle to get it in shot now this is my friend Jacob's um, A4, got it from Railex last year, just like I got my controller and stuff. Um, and yeah, it is a, oh it's a stunning model, top of the line. Uh, these Hornby A4s, even though I haven't seen one, is better than Buckman A4s, according to um, various people online. Um, the and Due to the shape of the nose there, um, the Buckman one seems to be a bit steeper, which is... Un, um, what's the word? Unprototypical sort of thing. So, packaging is very nice. It is the newer style sleeve packaging from Hornby. Um, I think this model re was released in approximately 2007, 2008. Um, so it's a good old model now. Um, well, not an old model, but it's it's very good. Now here is the history, now you can pause if you want to read that, there we go, and next, and um, Mallard is preserved as you all know, and is part of the National Collection in York, um, at the National Railway Museum. So, now what you all want to see, we're going to get it out of the box. Um, so as I say, this is my friend uh, Jacob's model. Now you can take the sleeve off, put that to one side. It's a very nice sleeve, by the way. Um, and it's just a standard Hornby box, pretty much. Um, got the white sleeve there, and out. Now this is a second-hand model which Jacob bought. Um, so... Right, have I got instructions? That is a very good question. I should. No, I do not have the instructions. I shall go get them. Hang on. And here they are. So I just left them on my desk. I forgot to put them back in the box for this review. So it's standard Hormi instructions, class A4 locomotive and tender, operating and maintenance instructions. Got all you need to know about running in your model, running hints. Uh, routine maintenance, uh, this model as I forgot to point out is DCC ready, you've got where to lubricate it, how to remove the locomotive body, um, to replace the locomotive motor, and it's got coal removal and replacement. Um, and on the back it's just got where you fit the details which are already supplied. Um, and yeah, so it's just basic Hornby instructions. Now this, the normal split packaging of Hornby does come with the two end pieces, but this one didn't apparently, so, I mean, it was second hand, so we'll just take that sleeve off, and then, whoa. Mmm, A4 goodness right there, people. Right. I love this packaging. Boop! And off it comes. And there she is. So just now because this locomotive is second hand, it has got a bit of damage and it was bought quite cheaply. Um so let's go through it. Now they were of course the Grizzly A4 stunning design. And if I just get the end. So you've got a bit of end damage there, but that's alright. Yep, yeah, just there. And so we got sprung buffers. Yep, and we got the uh, the L the standard LNER whistle there, which um, which sounds really good. Um, now those whistles are the same whistles that are mainly used in on New Zealand on um, ex New Zealand Railways locomotives, uh, the J's, the K's. So that's quite interesting. And we've got a Grizzly double chimney, um, which is very nice. Blends into the locomotive really well. Um, 
Now those are etched plates, I can feel them there, um, which is very cool, and stunning uh, hand rails and pipes down there, and with uh, the hatches there, which I'd say they'd lift off and um, to access the boiler if necessary, um, so that's very interesting. We've got the valances, now they all had the valances in their LNER days, but when they got transferred over to British Railways in privatisation 1948 onwards, um, the valances got taken off, and um, what you see today, say Union of South Africa, um, Dominion of Canada, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, um, and a couple of others, which I can't remember, Bitten, Mallard, oh, what's the other one? I can't even remember. But... Oh, Sir Nigel Gressley, of course. Sir Nigel Gressley, Union of South Africa, and um, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower do not have the valances because they are in uh, British Railways livery. Um, Sir Nigel Gressley is in uh, the uh, short, um, short-lived experimental blue British Railways livery, which is very interesting. Um, so yes, moving on back to the model, we've got uh, what looks like the safety valves up there by the cab, and this is really cool, look, these open and close, and so do these ones. Look at that, how cool is that? Okay, I just find that cool, but, um, so yeah, we got four, four, six, eight, and we've got the builder's plate there. See if I can read that. Built in Doncaster, of course. London North Eastern Rail. I can't read the rest. Uh, so it's just got, yeah, L N E R pretty much on there. At, and the builder's number. Um, so we'll move on to the cab. Now this blew me away. Look at that. One of the best cab details I've ever seen. Um, ever. It, it, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Just look at it, people. They've even picked out the little dials on the... Um, on the... Uh, blah, 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 on the gauges and the temperature gauge and the speedometer. It's just incredible. And it's pretty much the same down the other side. Um, very nice linkage. Um, there, got the sort of slightly maroon wheels. Which is very nice, and this front bogey is sprung, um, which is pretty cool actually. Uh, so yeah, there is the locomotive, and now for the tender. Now this is again a standard um, grizzly tender, um, but it's in uh, blue, Alinea blue, and it's a non-corridor tender, which um, to my surprise, but. Uh, of course, I've never seen Mallard in the flesh, but um, we've got lovely uh, vacuum pipes there. Again, sprung buffers. We've got a NEM coupling there. Very good. In a NEM pocket, in a dovetail connection. And um, now, unlike Flying Scotsman's tender, this back wheel pivots. Now, this doesn't have it. This is just straight wheelbase. Uh, no pivoting wheel at the back. Um... Yeah, so got the locomotive connection there and the details, which is very nice. Hang on, <sighs> blow the dust away. Very nice. Got all the brake things, I think. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's very nice tender. Very nice tender. Uh, and as I say, this I think this whole load is removable. Let's test that theory. Ah. And, well, it definitely is removable. It wobbles about, so it is removable, so you can get it out. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it's very nice. I, I'm i loving this locomotive so far, guys. Um, so, yeah. So there she is. Now if I can 
managed to get it off the tripod. Now I'll, I'll, I'll film it running in a minute, so I'll see you then. So we've got some teaks uh, that came in the Flying Scotsman set on the layout at the moment. And what we're going to do is currently Mallard is backing up onto those teaks. Nice smooth coupling there. And now what we're going to do is she's going to haul some coaches. Um, now this is the, sh the same chassis as Flying Scotsman and I've tested it can haul over... 13 coaches with ease so this should be able to um, with virtually no problems so now here we go now it's only three teak so this should be a breeze Right, I hope that's in shot, which it is. So there you have it, the Hornby Premium Mallard, or slash A4. Um, now this is an absolutely stunning model. I highly recommend it to all of you modelling uh, the LNER and all of you modelling um, BR Eastern Region. You can get a BR uh, green one. Um, they're absolutely stunning. I would recommend them over the Buckman ones just because of their shape. It's just more um, correct. Um, so now for the scores, I'm going to give it for packaging. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It is very nice packaging, though it could be improved a little bit. Um, Right, what's next? We've got detail. Hmm, I'd say 9 out of 10. It is stunning, but um, yeah, some parts could be improved, like the rivets could be more highlighted or something. Just those little things that really matter. Um, and performance, I'm going to have to say again a 9 out of 10. Um, on my layout she doesn't handle slow speeds very well, I do not know why, it might be actually the state of my track colour. Um, but yeah, it is an overall 9 out of 10 for this model, it is an absolutely fantastic piece of kit, and I like it very much. Um, unfortunately it does have to go back to Jacob in a couple of days, um, but yeah, um, so it's very nice. So, uh... Thank you for watching guys, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and as always, see you later.